Hello, this is the first part of the basic level of the eFuture Internet Architecture module. In this part, I will introduce you the software-defined networking, one of the new networking um, architectures. So first of all, before going into details of the SDN, let's have a look at the conventional networking. It consists of many different kinds of specialized devices, such as routers, switches, middle boxes. I would like to emphasize here that many devices in the current networks are specialized, which means they are designed to fulfill a certain task in the network. It is not easy to add a new function to such a specialized hardware. And each device runs a complex and distributed control software. For example, a router runs its own software to compute the route for the data flow. And these devices are often configured manually. The configuration interfaces vary across vendors and even across different products of the same vendor. This may result in uh, incompatibility problems between different devices in the networks. The, so, these characteristics of the current network leads to an increased complexity, a slowed innovation, and inflated capital and operational cost. That's why a lot of new ideas have been proposed to cope with the limitation of the current network. Uh, following are the ideas that are proposed, which uh, finally led to software-defined networking. So from 1995 to 2000, the idea of active networks was introduced. It represents a radical approach to network control by envisioning a programming interfaces on individual network device, it, which uh, made the network programmable. This allows to customize some network functions and hence lower the barrier to innovation. And in the first half of the 2000s, the idea of separating control plane from the data plane was introduced. These innovations were driven by the industry's demands for technologies to manage routing in the IP networks. And in the middle of 2000s, the network operating system and open flow were proposed. This represented the first instance of widespread adoption of an open interface and it developed ways to make control data plane separation scalable and practical. So, following are some key features of SDN. There are four key features that you should uh, remember. So the first one is that the data plane has been decoupled from the control plane. The second one is that a logical centralized controller exists and interfaces in the control plane and those in the data plane so that these two planes can communicate with each other. And the network is a programmable by external applications. So uh, now let's compare the SDN and the conventional network nodes. Um, as you see here, the control functions such as QS, routing, link management, and the data forwarding functions are located in the same device in the conventional network um, nodes. But in the SDN switch, um, there is only data forwarding function and an application programming interface which allows an outside controller to program the data forwarding function. So from these figures we can clearly see that the control plane is physically decoupled from the data plane in SDN switch. The SDN switch is therefore becoming a very simple device that can be easily standardized. So following uh, you see the SDN architecture. In this architecture, there are application planes, control plane, and data plane. The application plane contains all network management applications, such as uh, traffic engineering, traffic monitoring, energy management, and so on and so forth. Uh, the control plane contains a centralized representing the intelligence of the network. 
uh, in SDN, the controller is just uh, logically centralized. There are, in fact, multiple physical controllers that are interconnected to each other to form the centralized controller. And the controller has the global view of the network. Um, in the data plane, there are network nodes on network devices. And these network nodes and network devices in SDN are often the standardized hardware, which is a programmable. We don't need a specialized hardware for it, like in the conventional network. So now let's have a look at each component in more detail. So the SDN applications are the programs that directly programmatically communicate their designed network requirements and behaviors to the SDN controller via the northbound interface. They use the abstracted view of the network provided by the controller for their internal decision-making process. The SDN controller is a logically centralized entity that has an abstracted global view of the whole network. It provides this information to the application and it translates the requirements of the applications to the network devices at the data plane. The logical controller can comprise multiple physical controllers connected via their communication interfaces. And the data path is a logical network device which has the forwarding and data processing capabilities. It communicates the, with the controller via the southbound interface. A data path may, contain, may be contained in a single network element or may also be defined across multiple physical network elements. And now are the interfaces. First, um, uh, uh, first is the southbound interface, uh, which is the interface between the controller and the data paths. It provides at least the following um, functions. First is the programmatic control of all forwarding operations in the data plane. The, it provides the capabilities advertisements so that it can broadcast the information of the control from the control plane to the data. Uh, plane. It provides the statistics reporting so that the controller can gather the information from the um, network devices in the data plane. And of course, it um, provides the event notification so that the controller knows what is going on in the data plane. The last one is the northbound interface. This is the interface between the SDN controller and the SDN applications. The controller uh, provides the applications, the abstracted network view through this interface. And this interface also enables the expression of the network behavior and requirements. So that's all the um, brief overview of the SDN network. So now it's time for quizzes.